It's the time for the package from China. Let's go. I have so many good fond memories of the N64. I personally really love this thing, but I know there are a lot of people like really hating this thing. But the thing is like, if you grew up like me and you love this, a lot of people just wanted to play it on the game box because it's so much more convenient. But if you want to play N64, it's going to be like a mixed performance, particularly when it comes to a certain box, but also when it comes to playing a certain kind of game. In general, playing N64 games on a game box that is based on Android, it's going to be like absolutely a rabbit hole to deep dive in because some games will run okay, some will run absolutely horrible. So that is the thing that I wanted to dedicate this video to, to see can we even play some games and what is basically like the options nowadays. Because N64, I think it's still a very cool system to play and to enjoy alone or with friends. What is actually a game box? A game box is nothing more than an Android box. And for the people who are thinking, what is an Android box? An Android box is basically like a PCB inside a case that runs on Android. Android is an operating system that gives you the possibility to basically like watch on Netflix and do all kinds of cool stuff with it. So nevertheless, just what you're going to get is actually like an Android box that they have modified in some kind of a way. We're also going to talk about in this video about the modification because they did some interesting things lately. So basically an Android box is the similar thing that you can find in your smart TV. It's more like a piece of equipment that you can pick up and hook up to a monitor and just have like new functionalities. It will basically is your gateway for basically like going into Netflix, Amazon Prime and stuff like that. And also like on your phone, your Android phone, you can download and play games. And also you can download emulators and play retro games. There are basically like so many different ways to go to. When it comes to the Android boxes, there we have like a lot of significant differences when it comes to the quality, the speed and everything that comes with it. But nevertheless, the Chinese are actually reusing these boxes in different kind of ways. But in short, that is what an Android box is, what you normally can do with it. But let's get into the emulator, what this means and what it is. But okay, so you can just make it yourself. Yeah, so if you're having an Android box and you're just having the software on an SD card, you can just pop it in and you just have yourself the same result. Of course, when it comes to a ready-to-go plug-and-play kit from, let's say, AliExpress or where you can find them, the thing is, you will have like a complete kit, so it will contain the Android box, the controllers and the SD card. The only unfortunate thing is with these ready-to-go kits, that it's going to be like a gamble if you're going to get yourself a good controller. There are like 2.4 GHz wireless working on two AAA batteries, but these are like okay quality, but sometimes you're going to get like really cheap ones with horrible joysticks and some with some pretty damn D-pads. So is it a great thing to buy? That is something of a gamble. Building your own kit, you can just decide what kind of Android box you want to use, what kind of size SD card, and also what kind of quality SD card. So nevertheless, it's going to be like way cheaper to do this and actually like Amialic can just be downloaded for free. And that's basically something you need to take consideration. Ready to go kits. So basically, Super Console X and Pauki Box or whatever these things are called are just like ready to go kits. They will like reconfigure or they try to reconfigure stuff. Some of the boxes are pretty damn bad, some are like pretty damn awesome. They will give you like a good controller and like an official brand or at least like a good quality SD card. And you will have a sometimes even a modified system when it comes to the software but also the hardware. So all everything is slightly optimized and better cooled. So when it comes to these kits, there are like a gazillion of these things. There's absolutely like the jungle of kits what we're going to talk about too in this video. But again, like it depends on what kind of game you want to play. And of course, what kind of box you're going to use. Because all the kind of different chipset will have a different result when it comes to the emulation part. And size doesn't matter. It's absolutely a fact. Because they will sell these things with all kinds of different, let's say, fancy things on it. Like a 64GB and 128GB or 256GB. And I even spotted a 512GB. If you think about it, it looks all kind of fancy. But again, like I've said previously, it's like what kind of like SD card are you going to get in the end? Is this a good SD card? And also, is it like not really worth it? Because if you're going to get it, you're not going to get anything special 
special in the end. I have seen it, I have tried it, and when I'm going to pick up three different versions or three, three different sizes, you're just going to get yourself the same product with the same crappy controller sometimes, only with a different ID card, but you're paying so much more for it. Up to the point, it's not even worth it. So in my case, I think it's not really worth like picking up the biggest model sometimes. Sometimes like the middle class, depending on the price you need to pay for it is more than enough. Improved versions. Yeah, there are absolutely improved in versions there. So what you're going to get are improved versions. They have modified the Android box itself. When we started the shenanigans when it comes to Super Console X, they just basically slapped an old Android box inside a in case. But the main problem was like the heat. These things can get really hot after like using it for a couple of hours and there was no way of getting rid of it. No active fan, there was like minimum cooling when it comes to passive and they did some modifications when it comes to these acrylic cases. Added a fan, added better cooling. So they did have like some improved versions of different kind of brands and even some other brands like Super Console came with a new version that had like absolutely weird looking piece of plastic on it but it had a fan and way better cooling in the inside. So that is why you have like with improved versions, they try to improve them. The overall quality, how is it with this? Depending on what you're going to buy. Already mentioned before, they did some modification versions because like the original Super Console X had some problems with heat and of course some other issues too. Also the SD cards, I think the biggest problem basically we're facing is like the heat issue, what I mentioned before, but also the cheap chemical controllers and the crappy SD cards you're using. In the beginning they used SanDisk or I think they were SanDisk. Later on they used like this Chinese brand not a problem at all because they sell them like separately on Aliexpress. But then we had like the issue with the non-brands. And the main problem is that some of them will get corrupted even if you're not going to be adjusting anything to it. Actually when it comes to the quality you need to be careful what kind of brand you're buying. Simply because some of them will use really crappy like SD cards. And that is just the biggest issue. Because if your SD card gets corrupted you need to start all over again. Or just make a backup. That is always better with some Bellina Archer. Nevertheless, that is like when it comes to the quality. The modified versions are slightly better when it comes to cooling and all the other things. But what is the best game box actually for N64 emulation? There is going to be quite tricky because we have like all those boxes. But when it comes to the performance, we do get like a mix. So we have like the cheap boxes with the S905. Then we have like the box with the S905 X3. And all of these boxes will have the option to play N64, but the results are completely different from each other. And don't forget about the GT King. That is absolutely the king when it comes to the emulation boxes at this moment. We have like some different versions, we're also going to talk about that. But also here we have like three different boxes with three different results. So let's talk about the chip version and what is basically like in the end when it comes to emulation performance. The first one we're going to talk about is the S905 series. They have all kinds of versions but we just wanted to show you the improved edition. And yeah, what can we do with it and what are we going to get? The first one is going to be the S905 chipset. They call it the X, the L, you have all kinds of versions with some slightly differences when it comes to clock speeds. It comes with the GPU, Mali 450. Then we have like one gigabyte of RAM. Yeah, and the signal output, it can maybe like 720p or 1080p, but when it comes to emulation, you're just going to get yourself like native resolutions. But how does it work out? That is quite simple. The emulation performance with this cheap box and N64 is absolutely not a great combination. So if you want to play some Diddy Kong Racing or some other launch titles, some of them are like optimized this way. You can actually play them and just enjoy them. But when you're going to get into more games of N64, there you're going to see a lot of problems that have been noticed with a lot of these cheap boxes from Aliexpress. If you want to play some Killer Instinct, would not be surprised, you are going to get like a glitch fest or you do have like a lot of slowdown, stuff like that, because that is something that happens because these games are too demanding for the hardware that's basically running on it. And in my opinion, some games are playable to a certain point that will have like some glitches or some hiccups. But in the end, I think this is not the experience you want to have. I will keep seeing this in different kind of more demanding games. F-Zero X, another great game, one of my favorite ones I love to play on my N64, is a game will not run perfectly and with a lot of problems, unfortunate. So you will see like an okay performance, but when you're going to be like having a lot of stuff going on the screen, it's going to be dipping down like crazy. And of course my personal benchmark, Cruise in the USA, this is a game that is most of the time unplayable with these cheap boxes. So in my opinion, it's absolutely a no-go. But don't get me wrong, this device can play so much more than of course N64. But N64 is just going to be a mix, let's say, performance and a lot of issues. Because this is just a cheap, underpowered box. But again then, you can like play so much more than only N64. The next one 
when it comes to the lineup is the S905 X3 model. And this model has so much more to offer. When you're looking at the price compared with the older model, it's not like a big step up, but also when you're looking at the firmware and everything, it was so much better. When you're looking at the specification list, the S905 X3 is so much better compared with its say, previous model, the S905 X. So what you're going to get with this is way more RAM, 4GB in total, a newer CPU and GPU combination, and then of course we have the option to even like update and the like to 4 and later. So this thing also has so much more to offer when it comes to emulation. Don't get me wrong, it's still not powerful enough to run most of the N64 games. But when you're going to look at, let's like, say, the launch titles, then we're going to get like slightly better performance, and a lot of games are way better playable. And of course, we do have like way more options when it comes to configuring with the emulators. If you're looking into the launch titles, the games are mostly run on, let's say, low end boxes, but also like the mid range. Also, here we're going to get, let's say, pretty good, okay performance. Take consideration, you need to run it on native resolution. There is not like upscaling possible, and yeah, it still has a lot of limitations in my opinion. But if you're interested in let's playing all of the library on the S905 X3, this is something that is absolutely, in my opinion, not possible. The overall like, experience is pretty good, but you will have like a lot of games, think about Killer Instinct, F-Zero, GoldenEye, that will still have like a lot of issues when it comes to slowdowns and other glitches and stuff like that. And when you're going to look into, let's say, the more demanding, think about in Cruising USA, you will still have like the beginning starters and a very bad, let's say, FPS in general of the gameplay. So in my opinion, a lot of games are still not playable. And the third one in line is the more faster product. And this is more the chipset that is basically like one of the best ones. Basically why I'm stacking these things together is very simple. They have like slightly different performance boosts, especially when it comes to the Pro. But basically it is more the choice of what you want to buy because the Pro version is so much more expensive than the normal. But again, these two in my opinion are sharing the same kind of chip only with some slightly like different clock speeds. But again, when it comes to emulation performance, we don't see like a big significant jump up. But when you're looking at the X3 to the X922, there we're going to get like a very nice boost. But is it worth the money? Well, let's do a quick overview of the GT King models. Already mentioned there is a number one and a pro, but also on number two. Number two is not something you will not use at making this video because there is no support for Emmy Alec, for example. You can always like use a separate emulator, of course. But the first model is just the S922X. It has a way powerful more CPU and GPU combination. And when you're looking at the S922XH, the Pro model, it will have like different clock speeds, especially when it comes to the second core count. Nevertheless, we do have like a little bit more GPU power there. And basically when you're looking at the first two models, both will have like almost similar result when it comes to emulation, when it comes to N64. And of course, then we have a link like the latest model that's making this video. It didn't give up like a big boost whatsoever. We're going to put every single GT King in one cluster part in this video, simply because in my opinion, most of the emulation performance is the same. But when it comes to the launch titles, there we have no problem whatsoever. I want to say you can upscale it like crazy. You will have like way better performance than the first two boxes we talked about but still sometimes we will have some hiccups here and there. And you will find it sometimes an unpleasant experience when it comes to playing some old school N64 games on this box too. The overall experience is so much better, but when you're looking at Killer Instinct, for example, there we still have like a minor hiccup. F-Zero runs way better, and a lot of games that have issues with the previous boxes will have like a better performance overall boost when it comes to the S922 chip. But then we have still like using USA that have the same issues whatsoever. And unfortunate, so far I know there is no cheap box from AliExpress that basically can fix this problem. In my opinion, these are basically the three ways you can go to when it comes to the chipset and support with Amy Alec. The S905 is more like the base model, has a lot to offer, but comes with a lot of problems and a lot of flaws when it comes to emulation on certain systems. Then we have like the S905 X3. This device has just like new options, new kind of a firmware possibilities. And again, it's just a step up. And of course, then we have like the other chipset itself. And this chip is absolutely like the king of them all. But again, it will come always with some problems. And I mean like the problems like still having some emulation issues. But again, it has like so much more to offer. And this is basically the lineup of system where you can basically build yourself, get yourself a kit or whatsoever you want to do with it.
But we still have like a lot of issues with Android boxes. When you're going to look into mini PCs with Bodacera, there we're going to have like none of those issues most of the time. Navis Revolution, and then we have like this mini PC that costs around like $75 up to $150, depending where you're living, where you're buying it from. But we're having so many freaking different versions. They're like dirty cheap nowadays, and they're like super compact. And I think that will be like one of the ultimate solutions if you want to emulate N64 at least on native resolution and having like good performance without like hiccups. Cruising the USA is a great example that doesn't want to run on Android boxes but don't have any problems. So far I have played and seen when it comes to a mini PC. And again, when you're looking at the prices of an Android box or an Android game box, Super Console X, stuff like that, and you're looking at mini PC and you're going to slap basically a bottle share image, it is basically the same idea like an Android box, you will get so much more better result. Basically, you're going to get way better performance for your money. But that's something I just wanted to put out and just wanted to say. But if you're going to look into mini PCs and you want to buy something new and not expensive, you have like the Intel Celeron or Lake Celeron processors, the G3455, you got also the 4000 series and also like the 5000 series. These things are like dirty cheap. They're not made very robust, they're made of, fully made of plastic most of the time, but they do the job well, especially when it comes to emulation and has way better performance when it comes to these Android boxes. Alright, so let's try out N64. I've tried it many times before on all kinds of, let's say, Android boxes, but I see we have so many issues. And that's what I like about these Bodicera versions, that just Bodicera combination with the mini PC, we do get so many great performance. Conclusion basically is that like, you can play a lot of let's say N64 games on Android box But the experience will not be like the same like when you're looking into like say, the mini PCs That is something you need to take consideration when you're going to get into the jungle of these like Android boxes I want to thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think of this it would be great if you subscribe to the channel hit the bell and it would be great also to just see you in the next video